public expect of us. It's what they deserve of, to deserve of us, Mr Speaker. And I'm very, very happy to commend these three bills to the House. I call the Honourable Member Chris Farfoli to Lohani. To Lohani, Mr Speaker. Um, Mr Speaker, for those uh, people watching uh, Parliament TV tonight, um, just in case they went to get a cup of tea while Mike, Mike Saban was talking, and I don't blame them, um, I'd just like to remind uh, them what we're actually debating here tonight. We're debating the New Zealand Public Health and Disability Amendment Bill, uh, the Mental Health Commission Amendment Bill, and also the Charities Amendment Bill. But Mr Saban, in his contribution to those three bills, I would like to remind those people uh, who are watching tonight that we are debating, talked about frontline services and, and the agenda of this government to make sure uh, frontline services are delivering better for all New Zealanders. Well, I'd just like to remind, or maybe Mr Saban hasn't read the papers in the last couple of days about the frontline services that have been affected in the education uh, education sector. So maybe Mr Saban might want to go out and look, read the Dominion Post, maybe the local paper up in Northland, just to see what the frontline changes that this government uh, have announced and the backpedalling, the significant amount of backpedalling uh, that is happening with the government's uh, announcements in the budget with frontline services. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I turn to the bill uh, after um, rebutting some of the points that Mr Saban has made and just talk uh, about a word, and uh, Mr Saban did use it, uh, the synergies that will come about from uh, uh, bringing um, ALAC and the Health Sponsorship Council together in the Health Promotion Agency. We do agree with that measure uh, that is contained in this bill. Uh, we do believe that bringing uh, two um, agencies like uh, uh, the Alcohol Liquor Advisory Council, I believe it is, and, and the um, Health Sponsorship Council, which has done such good work in terms of its uh, promotion of the anti-smoking message, is a good move. Um, and I'd like to um, thank uh, the board of ALAC and uh, Jared Vaughan, the, uh, the chief executive of ALAC, for the work that he's done over many years. Um, and we do hope um, uh, that that uh, new agency does uh, good work. I know that there was some concern during the select committee stage, and especially from the Alcohol Health Watch, who didn't agree with the merger of those two agencies. Um, and in their submission to uh, the select committee, they did say, and I quote, however, the establishment of the new entity, the HPA, appears to be driven by cost-cutting measures rather than a desire to see better health outcomes for New Zealanders. This is of great concern to us given that any cost savings will not necessarily be increasing investment in health. And while, while Labor is supporting uh, this measure in the first, bill that, um, the first of the three bills that we are debating here tonight, we will be keeping a close eye on that measure to make sure uh, that the synergies actually do deliver um, and it's not just um, cost savings that we're looking at. Can I now turn to the Charities Amendment Bill, which is the most contentious part, and um, uh, Mr Saban said this was the, the most um, uh, debated or interesting part. I think the, the, the correct term may be um, this is the part of the, um, the, what was the Crown Entities Bill which um, got the most um, opposition because of the 43 submissions to uh, the bill, 20 specifically uh, were in opposition to it. And I'd just like to uh, point out um, the, the noises made uh, or the comments made by uh, the United Future Leader Peter Dunn, uh, who was very, very, um, uh, I think, I believe, uh, supportive of some of the moves around this area. And I'd just like to point out an email that was sent to me by Mr Robin Gunston, who was an electorate of mine in Mana, uh, who was also, funnily enough, uh, a United Future candidate uh, in Mana. And he, Robin Gunston, uh, who sent me, helpfully sent, sent me an email, and he, uh, he did, I'm writing to, to you to ensure that as local M and MP, you're fully aware of the proposed government changes to the future of the Charities Commission, which we in the sector are deeply concerned about. Uh, my wish and those of the boards and volunteers of the various charities I represent would ask Parliament to drop the Charities Commission from the Crown entities that the Government is seeking to reform at this stage. Uh, Mr Speaker, he goes on to say, um, as the monetary savings are minuscule, but we cannot afford to lose the independence of the Charities Commission at this juncture. There is time to do, to do this in the 2015 sectoral reform already announced. Mr Gunston goes on, and I would just like to remind the House that Mr Gunston was a United, United Future candidate. Um, through the meetings and phone calls that we have had with, ministered, that we have had with ministered, ministers, it has become clear that the ramifications or timing of this 
uh, sorry, um, were not especially well thought through, and aside from the hoped for cost savings, there doesn't appear to be overwhelming evidence to support the move, certainly not that the ministers have articulated. Mr Speaker, I do want to note that uh, Trevor Mallard moved this SIP in the committee stage to, de to delay this by three years. Uh, that wasn't picked up, and it's, that's very unfortunate. I call the, it's a split call, I'm sorry to say the member, the split call between Labour and National. Oh, sorry.